afternoon everyone welcome back to our session and for this session we're going to talk about the integrated pest management for mango so um mango is one of the commercial crop which received really a tremendous amount of pesticides during flower and fruit development and over the past decades mango production has become increasingly dependent on chemicals or conventional approaches to pest control and this include calendar spraying about eight to ten times during flower and fruit development and the use of different mixture of toxic chemicals so can you imagine the pesticide residue that we receive every time we eat mango so these practices create economic environmental and health problems in the countryside so one management practice which can help address these problems is the integrated pest management also known as ipm this increase farm profits maintain good yields safeguard the environment and reduce health risk of farmers and consumers so it involves the combination of proper cultural management to improve the vigor of the trees resistant varieties biological control and other biological procedures to prevent or reduce or mitigate pests the use of pesticide is included as part of the integrated approach to pest control however cultural management practices which tend to prevent pests are emphasized with ipm pesticides are used only when absolutely necessary mainly to control pest infestation as a last resort and natural enemies of pests and the use of natural pollinators are encouraged and environmental contamination is thus minimized so what are these ipm strategies and tactics so this include first pruning so we have been talking about pruning and uh, we have known from the past that it can control pests and disease or prevent from contamination and infestation so this involves again the removal of crowded and unnecessary branches as well as parts damaged by insects and diseases so through pruning the population of insect pests is reduced discouraged multiplication of spread of diseases and it, this is recommended after harvest preferably during summer so a well pruned trees allow light penetration and go good air circulation therefore creates an environment less favorable for development of leaf hoppers mealybugs and diseases like anthracnose most especially and stem and rot and scab and in in addition it facilitates the distribution of sprayed up droplets in canopy for effective control ng pest so Another is clean culture. This is done by rain cultivation, sanitation through cleaning of surrounding areas and collection and destruction of infected branches of fruit droppings. So this is an effective cultural management practice which limits the development and spread of pests. So this, the practice is very important in minimizing problems related to fruit fly and seed borer infestation. And collection of fallen fruits and burying them deep in the ground to prevent insects from completing the life cycle. This also eliminates the breeding sites of other pests. It is recommended to destroy sources of disease infection by collecting and burning fallen branches, fruits, and other crushes. And another one is monitoring. Regular monitoring of flowers of fruits for specific pests and population has become proven effective for the success of pest program. This depends, however, on the comprehensive knowledge of the pest, particularly its life history, behavior, disper distribution, dispersion, and seasonal abundance. For example, for nymphs and adults of mango leaf hopper, which is very destructive to flowers and are abundant during dry season, their population becomes low when flowers are not available. Thus, the increase in fruit fly population is influenced by the availability of suitable hosts and onset of the season will be detected from a regular visit of the fruit trees. So next is the chemical control. Chemicals which are used to control or kill pests are referred to as pesticide. These are power tools in pest management since they are usually very effective against large pest population and act within a short period of time and are readily available for use. We also have insecticides. Uh, these are chemicals used to control insect pests are classified as inorganic and organic depending on their chemical nature and according to their route of entry. So they are grouped in stomach poisons or act via ingestion or absorption, contact poison or readily absorbed by the cuticle of the skin, fumigants are entered through breathing organ of insect and gaseous state, 
And these are formulated either as wettable powders, emulsifiable concentrates, or granules. So how do we manage insecticide? Identify the weak links in the life cycle of insect pests and direct insecticide application at these weak links and uh, applied based on pest monitoring for insect at panicle stage, insecticide application initiated when three hoppers are present per panicle, and different classes approval of insecticide should be used alternately to delay development of insect resistance. So apply insecticide as fine spray means for better control of different insect pests. So use the most effective insecticide only at the very critical stages when pest population reach very high level. Fungicide is also another chemical which are used for diseases affecting mangoes caused by fungus. And these are important tools for pest management and generally sprayed on leaves, flowers, fruits of mango as protectants. And they are designed to present on plants in advance to prevent infection. So new products have been developed to kill fungi which are already invaded the tissues. So for the management of fungicide application, this should be applied at plant stages that are vulnerable to anthracnose and when environmental conditions are favored for the development of the disease, which need base rather than calendar-based application. And the vulnerable plants Stages for anthracnose infection are stages covering flushing or 1 to 15 days after flower bud breakup up to fruit set and maturity. The most critical stage for anthracnose infection is from pre bloom about 20 daffy up to fruit set about 35 daffy. The appropriate use of fungicide should be observed. Protecting fungicide should be applied during less critical period and are effective if they are applied before disease infection is initiated. Systemic fungicide should be applied during critical periods and usually after infections have started. And protectant and systemic fungicide should be applied alternately to prevent development of resistance. When critical stages 20 to 35 DAFI coincide with extremely favorable condition for anthracnose development, a mixture of combination of systemic and protectant fungicides can be resorted. So as you can notice, uh, it's better to use systemic because um, this will uh, this will be um, absorbed inside the system of the plants unlike for contact fungicides when they are only sprayed if if um, the fu the fungus are present in somewhere else or in the leaves so if flushing at 15 daffy coincide with wet humid condition protect flushes by spraying one round of protectant fungicide and avoid the use of systemic fungicides. So fungicide application should be scheduled based on the crop phenology and weather condition. Bagging is also very recommended to protect the fruit from pests and reduce by spraying of insecticide. And it's an important cultural practice for mangoes since it reduces the more of pesticide application and produce fruit better quality. This is done when fruits are about chicken's egg size, about 55 to 60 daffy, and used to serve as a physical barrier which prevent mechanical injury, protect the fruits from fruit flies, seed borer, black borer, seed flies, and minimize infection caused by anthracnose, diplodia, and scab. If early attack of insect pests is anticipated, early bagging of fruits is recommended about 45 daffy onwards. So uh, these are the steps in bagging. For, for bagging materials, you can use newspaper uh, during rainy month as uh, these are sturdy and can withstand strong wind and rain if it is important. And if it's not available, you can use yellow pages from telephone directory, local newspaper during dry season, and avoid using plastic bags since this can accumulate moisture conducive na for development of diseases like antiknose. So a Chinese preform brown paper bag is available also but costs 1 peso per piece. So you can also use a full patient's paper. Uh, six paper bags measuring 8.5 inch in width appropriate uh, for bagging fruits and can approximately um, make 294 bags for one kilogram newspaper so the bag should be sealed at all sides except the opening of the staple wire arrange the bags in bundles about 100 bags per bundle and about three to four bundles carried each time by the by the time or each time the bagger climbs a tree so you need ladder and ropes to assess fruits during bagging. Ropes are tied around the bagger's waist with one end of the rope tied in a sturdy branch. The rope must be long enough for adjustment when the bagger transfers position during the operation. And bagging starts from the top of the canopy, moving downward. 
Fruits which are clean and without any abnormality should be bagged. After enclosure, the opening of the bag should be folded and sealed with a staple wire to prevent entry of insects. And avoid bags which are not fitted close to the fruit. Insects like fruit fly and season fly can easily pierce the paper with their ovipositor and lay eggs on the fruit surface. Therefore, size of the bag recommended early can lessen this problem. And it should be emphasize that bagging does not provide prot total protection for the fruits. So studies have shown that maximum protection for insect and disease control varies only from 75 to 80 percent. In the field, bags are destroyed by strong winds, rains, exposed to fruits for uh, to several pests. So in this case, rebagging is recommended. So we have another one, irrigation. Well, since water is very essential, not only for the development of, but also for the translocation and nutrients. So um, the idea is, although the ideal climate requirement for mango is five months continuous dry season, water is also beneficial to mature trees, especially during flowering and fruiting. So for established trees that are deep rooted and have the ability to extract water several feet below the ground, but however, during flowering and fruiting, moisture should be readily available for optimum growth. So irrigation during flowering and fruiting results to longer for flower panicles and increased number of fruits per panicle and reduce fruit drop, increase fruit size, and improve fruit quality. So for big trees, about 100 to 200 liters of water is recommended each week, applied weekly starting from flower immersion or 12 days after flower induction to one month before harvest or 90 days after induction. So this requirement is, uh, however, enorm enormous and oftentimes not met in the field and only relies on uh, rain. Fall. So in places where water is availability is a, is a problem, recommended that, that bamboo poles 6 inches diameter or 1 to 2 meter high should be placed around the tree for such poles buried 0.5 meter deep and 1 meter away from the trunk and will filled with water requirement each tree during flower and fruit development. So each week bamboo poles are filled with water for continuous supply or you can also use plastic pipes or PVC to replace bamboo since the former does not stay long in the field. So water supply applied to trees using canal hose flooding dike and drip method and a motor pump is provided which forces water into small black tubes and a regulator is provided in each tube which control and distribute rec required amount of water per tree uh, and for the system it's the most efficient way of regulating the trees in the field and in some orchard the deep Drip irrigation is a common irrigation facility and consists of perforated rubber holes placed in rows or between rows of mango trees with a control unit which allows the prescribed volume or frequency of water needed by each tree and modification fertilization can be applied with irrigating the trees and process called fertigation. So these are the important consideration in irrigation. First, irrigate trees at flowering and footing stages and has faster development of flowers, minimize fruit drop, and uh, increase fruit size and apply water weekly during flower fruit development and stop one month before harvest. Amount of water varies with size and tree and available moisture in the in the soil. So these are the list of the important pests affecting bearing trees. We have pests affecting twigs and flowers. We have mango leaf hoppers or Aegiscopus clepis. So this equates cold honey dew, which are excellent medium for development of fungus sooty mold. So for, to prevent this, uh, you can just use um, light trapping and uh, also um, prevent this using insecticides. No? So this uh, you have here the guides, so I'm not be going to go into details into this one. No? And the second one is the mango tip broader or the Clomesia traversa. So for the prevention, you have to start destroying the flowers from bad emergence to elongation hence. Hence, you have to spray insecticides as well at early stage. No? As also as a control, you can prune infested flowers and also apply insecticides. So we also have mango tree cutter or borer, Nephoniclea albata. Um, this will cut or girdle the branch or twig and will damage eventually, no? Dry the leads on tree canopy and um, that's the sign of twig cutter infestation. So for prevention, you have to 
minimize uh, damage by spraying the whole canopy of an insecticide and repeat application afterwards so control also by pruning damaged twigs and branches and also um insecticide no and circular white buck borer it's a longhorn beetle and has very similar habits to twig cutter or borer so this is um will be prevented like the twig cutter using um insecticides or cutting of the twigs and pruning for millibags we have Verisia vergata or planococcus liliacinus so you can um these are both adult stems and attacking the flowers by feeding on the base gradually moving up to cover the entire panicle so the florets will be uh, destroyed no, on uh, drop off prematurely so for the prevention you have bagging of fruits using paper bag seal at all sign destruction of red ants are recommended or heavily infested parts should be pruned and burned no or you use insecticide we also have thrips uh, or certo thrips dorsalis seleno thrips rubricentus and um, this cause flowers to dry causing similar to burning effect in many plants so for prevention you have to uh, prune crowded branches to allow light penetration and apply insecticide for recommended rates we also have green beetle and june beetle or anomala sp lycopolis erorita erorata and this will feed on the leaves and also flower of mango so to prevent this you can uh dislodge the tree by shaking branches and so that the adults can fall into the ground and also spray recommended insecticide for insect pests affecting fruits we have mango seed borer or nurda abyssinalis and it is um of course affecting the fruit quality and also can abort the fruit no so to prevent this you have to use um uh insecticides of course and also can you can uh, manually destroy you know the healthy fruits or infected fruits no collecting and burning them and also bagging and of course insecticides so we also have mango black border uh, of course as it uh the presence of larvae is detected no on the skin of the fruit uh, affecting its quality so the same method is used for its control you know, collecting and burning it and also spraying insecticide or bugging we also have mango fruit flies or batrocera philippinensis or occipitalis so the damage is caused by egg laying so um under severe infestation um this will also cause the fruit to abort no and the quality as well so for for prevention um the the fruits can be collected and also destroyed no and um also um you can use intercropping or bagging of fruits and also um apply insecticides or a chemical known as methyl eugenol mixed with insecticide or malathione so we also have mango seeded fly or procantarica catrinia species so uh, you can see galling of young leaves here fruit attack uh, also produce circular brown scab like spots and um, sometimes called booty armalite or curicong so and saksak wallis by growers so to prevent this you can um under brushing and clearing of surroundings and therefore also pruning early bugging and also apply insecticides of course we also have cap seed bag or hello peltis so this feeds on different uh species of plants in the fruits so to prevent this uh you can have early bugging at 40 to 50 days and also under brushing and clearing surroundings and um of course applying insecticides so mango pop weevil or sternocetus frigidus also are one of the main pests found in palawan which uh which is 
of course under quarantine in terms of mango since this is a very uh, destructive pest so to prevent this of course uh eradication quarantine pruning and also bagging no and also insecticide so we also have scale insects several species have been reported to attack mango and the most common are the green scale or the cucus veridis the coconut scale the absidutus destructor shield scale pulvinaria polygonata and wax scale vinsonia silifera and oriental scale anedula orientalis and tropical scale hermi burlasha palmae so you will notice thin black paper film that covers the affected parts to reduce photo photosynthetic activity ng leaves no and so to prevent this red and uh, Red ants, which carry and distribute the scale insects to different parts of the tree, should be prevented using insecticides and bugging and also spraying no? at near maturity. So we also have diseases of flowers and fruits. First and foremost, we have anthracnose caused by Colletotricum glosporoides occurs in all types or growing areas and also all stages no? ng, um na mango uh, growth and production so there are of course ne tiny black necrotic spots form at different parts and to prevent this um it should be trees should be pruned regularly to penetrate light penetration and practice sanitation and also reduce sources of inoculum by burning and um eradicating uh, the, the infected parts and apply recommended fungicide to prevent reduced flower and fruit infestation so um you, you should you, could, you should also practice bagging and avoid use of dry banana leaves and rice fruits packing materials they contaminate the fruit with the aspergillus fungus and so we also have stem and rot considered also as the most important post harvest disease to enter nodes prevalent during transport and storage so infected fruit rats will um completely within four to five days of loss due to uh disease no and so this is caused by lasidioplodja theobromae or daplodja natalensis and so to uh there will this the affected skin turns dark brown to purplish black and flesh becomes soft and watery so you have to prevent this by pruning and also spraying recommended fungicides and you should harvest fruits about one to two centimeter of the pedicel retained to avoid bruising or deep newly harvested fruit to hot water treatment 52 degrees to 55 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes so later in the next session we're going to discuss on post harvest handling and the, uh, we're gonna be showing videos on the overall production of um, mango so do not use also banana leaves or dried straws or lining and should be fruit should be packed properly in appropriate boxes or crates with lining and proper ventilation so we also have scab no considered only as minor disease and uh seldom spare from the attack of the fungus so caused by el sinue and um you can just uh, see infections, grayish brown spot with dark irregular margin of affected fruits fall to the ground. No, as spots enlarge, merong um cracks forming, raised fissured crooked tissues. So to prevent, to prevent prune and collect damaged leaves and branches to reduce fungal spore and apply protective fungicides, and uh fruit setting and during fruit enlargement so also you, you bag and apply copper fungicides and for sooty mood mold the coastal organism is non-pathogenic so it also feeds on tissue surface and does not enter to the host so uh, affected fruits are not fit for export in this case so prevention should destroy sake insects by spraying of recommended insecticide and bug fruits for 45 to 50 daffy and also uh, control the honeydew wash and brush with water and soak the fruits with sooty molds after harvest we also have gomosis or root rat or crown rat infection due to the fungus phytophthora palmivora and confined only to the bark and is conspicuous in the form of gum of exudation so to prevent this uh sterilize potting media to reduce source of infection as fungus is soil inhabiting and also well drain the soil avoid injure 
uh, injuring the root and practice proper cultural management or scrape insect bark and disinfect exposed wood by spraying 1% potassium permanganate solution and use standard trunk paint consisting of 2.5% captan and 2.5% copravit and necessary drenched soil with ridomil or one, with 100 mg per liter or alliet to control disease. So that's all for the integrated pest management in Mango and for the next session we're going to talk about on harvesting and post-harvest handling. Thank you very much and see you again on the next uh, session or video.